Hello and welcome back to Verity Babs Art where I talk to my friends about art. Today I spoke to Sophie Ward who is a YouTuber and comedian and we spoke about George Clausen's Farmer's Boy which is in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. We also spoke about the anxiety that can come with entering the gallery space like you feel like you might not know enough to have opinions about the pieces you you find that you like uh we also spoke about portraits and whether we might have become immune to them as a society that has camera phones and we're constantly seeing pictures of people's faces um and i really hope you enjoy the episode sophie please give us a little introduction to yourself Hello, my name's Sophie Ward. Uh, I I guess whenever I'm on the internet, I'm known as Soph's Notes. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about science. I mean, the kind of the main thing is I'm I talk about questions that I come across day to day. So why do I always have room for dessert? Or why do I get anxiety after I've been drinking? Stuff like that. So I try and like merge science and a little bit of humour and comedy uh, and put that on my channel which is Hope's Notes and that's like my main thing I'm doing at the moment because I used to do a bit of tutoring and that's not happening right now so yeah that's me. <laughs> fabuloso um I'm gonna cut that bit out I'm not gonna say fabuloso. Say fabuloso please <laughs> I'm gonna say it later on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get it in at all takes. Yeah. Um, so as per usual I got you to pick an artwork for us to kind of start talking about for the video and you chose Farmer's Boy by George Clausen uh, which is in the Ashmolean mm -hmm. Museum which is in Oxford which is where we both met which is lovely little little memento yeah. um, so <laughs> why don't you just start off for me kind of saying you know what was your first experience of seeing this piece is this something you have seen more than once what do you like about it and this kind of thing yeah so when you asked me for a picture, I kind of panicked because I have lots of experience of going to art galleries or museums and seeing art pieces that I really like and I like look at for a long time. And I do this thing where I, I'll, there'll be a couple of pieces in each museum or gallery or whatever, and I will, I will really like hone in on it and I'll look at it really close and I'll look at all the brush strokes and then I'll look at it from far away. And the thing is, is I will for maybe a couple of days remember that piece really clearly and then I just forget about it. And so when you asked me for an art piece, I thought, oh my gosh, I've spent so much time looking in great detail mm. at particular pieces and then I've just forgotten them. But one of the first times I remember doing this was with Farmer's Boy. And I remember being in the Ashmolean with my parents. They were visiting uh, when I was in Oxford in my first year. And they were like, oh, let's go to the Ashmolean. It's a really nice museum. And my mum was really drawn to this piece. And she was like, oh, it's really like the emotion behind it. Like, I don't know, like it's, it's amazing that the boy has kind of such an emotional look on his face, uh, even though he's not really pulling much of an expression, but there's a lot there. And so she kind of pulled me over to look at it. And then I kept just coming back to it and kind of, again, looking at it close, looking at it far away. And just, I kind of look at art in a very cerebral way. Like I really think about how was the artist, you know, what were they trying to achieve? How did they achieve it? How did that stroke make a whole difference to the, to the piece? And yeah, Farmer's Boy, it's not like changed my life, but it's the, the first time I like remember really having this way of looking at art and I actually I couldn't remember the name of it and I messaged my mum and was like what was that piece that we spent ages looking at in the Ashmolean it was a boy and she was like oh it's this one so it's more of the memory of it with my yeah. mum I guess than anything else. It is just so interesting how different people's minds work when they're looking at art like I have an absolutely dreadful attention span so I I'm finding it really hard to do this thing that you know, is a phenomenon called slow looking mm. where you're meant to really take in a piece I think the average time someone looks at an artwork in an art gallery or a big museum is about 18 seconds oh, and okay. kind of moves on because there is this thing in museums where if it's a huge a huge collection and there are important artworks in there you would feel really guilty kind of looking at three works and sort of walking past a Picasso and not looking at that as well there's this yeah. sort of thing that you need to complete the art gallery like you would finish a book um so I really struggle with this slow looking um this is the first time I've seen this piece as well um and 
I think it's really interesting. Just my first reaction to your choice of this piece is that in a world where we now, like with with photography and mobile cameras and stuff like that, we see so many portraits the whole time. And they're most of the time they're people that we know and that adds this sentimental value for us. But it's really interesting when you can attach that sentimental value to someone, obviously someone you don't know and, yeah. the, and the depiction of someone you don't know. Um, so do you think some of that sentimentality does come from it being like a really nice memory of you and your parents going to the museum? Or, or what is it you think makes this piece so emotional for you? I guess it's a it's a, it's a, it, there's definitely the memory itself is attached to it right like that brings up a nice conversation I had with my mum about art and it also I guess the piece gave me an insight into her because it was like she was drawn to it and I was like oh that's interesting that this is a piece that my mum's drawn to and so it's like me being drawn to the piece is through the fact that she was drawn to it and almost like the connection that I make with her to the piece and to that memory but also I don't know it's it's a there's I feel like there's a lot of character in his face and I just I just find it amazing I just I was just like it's amazing that a still painting can have that kind of much character behind it which sounds so basic because we come up you see a lot of paintings of portraits and stuff but it's not like you know, an aristocratic, perfect painting of the Queen. It's like a bit more rough and ready, and I like that. And yeah, so I guess it's a mix of reasons. And the and the brushstrokes that that are going on, because they have this looseness about them, there is a sense of movement, this sense of it could be a is a sort of snapshot of an actual life where there are actual emotions. Whereas, like you were saying, these kind of portraits of you know the Duke and Duchess of whatever, that the important thing in that is the stillness of it and stoicness and the idea that this is completely unwavering and they sort of represent they almost represent stillness this un- unwavering hierarchy right but it's really nice to see the sense of movement in this piece and also that he he, he was just it's titled farmer's boy he was just a, a a nobody as it were and why paint him and why he it you know just like you said like all these stoic paints of the duke and duchess of wherever they're so cold and stoic and then here's a boy who's just been picked out of seemingly nowhere and he's so much time has been put into portraying him for some reason and it gives him more character because it's like oh he has he's allowed to have more character because he's just a farmer's boy kind of thing and I feel like I also find myself wanting to know what the person was like and thinking oh I wonder what this boy was like and what the time he grew up in was like and what he thought about being painted I think that's why I like paintings of people as well because you want to know their story kind of thing yeah that's yeah I guess that's kind of like the almost the opposite reaction to what I was talking about with this idea that you might not feel drawn into portraits nowadays because yeah. We're sort of desensitized to, to portrait I guess um so actually it's the not knowing who he is for you is is actually draws you in further rather than pushing you pushing you back just looking at this you know all I know about this is the picture I've got in front of me and the title and you know the artist's name and the date so it's 1884 the idea that it's 1884 seems makes me more interested in the piece because you know obviously industrial revolution is kicking off there's about to be, you know, turn of the century, there are going to be these enormous changes where, you know, just looking at the costume of this boy, this lifestyle that he is leading isn't going to really exist for much longer, mm. which I think is quite interesting. Like, he definitely belongs to the 19th century. Yeah. And like, the the this turning point. Yeah. And would he have, as he grew up, like, would he, how would he have dealt with the changes that he would have experienced and his mm. childhood life would have surely been very different to his adult life and, yeah. Yeah, and I think artists at this time are get, are getting really interested in the fact that there are these changes and artists sort of almost choose a side to be on. So artists are either at this point getting super interested in, you know, the fact that photography is happening or getting really, starting to get really abstract because they're like, the future is coming and it's so fast and it's so massive and it's going to change everything. Mm. Or they are sort of like, let's preserve this quiet rural life that potentially is about to about to disappear do you remember how big it was oh I think I feel like it was like about that it wasn't it was quite 
Mm. It was small in the sense that you felt like you were kind of person to person almost. Like Yeah, in, in, like, intimacy. Yeah. What, yeah. Watch me completely wrong now and it was huge and I'm just telling totally <laughs> you. Uh, yeah. cancelled yeah. Um, yeah the same thing about the these um uh you know royal portraits and stuff they're enormous and they're yeah. meant to make you feel tiny and um yeah. and uh, obedient and stuff like that you have a preference verity of like landscapes versus people versus abstract like what's your what's your preference to look at or is it just whatever you like a mix because you're short attention span <laughs> yeah. exactly um it's really interesting because when I first started to like art and feeling like it was something that I was aware of liking, um, the the year was 2012, um, and and I went and saw Damien Hirst's retrospective, and I was like, this is the stuff I like. I like stuff where it's you know a bit out there. It's kind of you know middle finger to to the establishment, like, and I thought that was the only kind of art I was ever gonna like. And that was how I felt all the way through school, really want, liked all this kind of subversive stuff. I was like, you know, Banksy's the real the real deal. You know, it's all about giving art back to the people, man. Um, and that was very much the way that I viewed art. And when I went to go and do my degree, um, I thought that was the only thing I was going to decide to study because you have some options about modules and stuff. And I thought, I'm only going to do contemporary stuff. I'm mm. really not fussed about everything else. I just want to talk about politics and be angry about stuff <laughs> um and throughout this degree it was so eye-opening how much stuff it turns out I love that I would have had absolutely no idea about so I thought the landscape would be something that I would really quickly dismiss mm. but actually one of my favorite things learning about to learn about was landscapes of this period in America where they are I'll put one up on the screen where basically in the same way of this industrial revolution thing happening, they're like, this is the wild landscape of America. And they're either viewing that as this is something for us to conquer and to industrialize and to um, bring society forward in the kind of um, the moving of the frontier. Or they're like, this is this is God's earth and we need to preserve this mm. and not and not touch it. And, and actually that had some sort of political undertones, but I, I found these landscapes actually really really moving which was something that really really surprised me I would say I'm probably not so fussed about still lives but then I've seen loads of still lives recently that are sort of modern yeah. and cool so you know I guess about- you've been taught you've been taught how to find like the I don't know how I guess to find the meaning and the place of different types of art and so I guess you don't see a piece anymore I imagine as either oh I like it or I don't it's kind of oh I can see where this has a place and what this is trying to do which gives it yeah. a lot more meaning I guess the way that art history kind of makes you look at stuff because you have a sort of background knowledge about different references people might be making and references to to other artworks and to classical theories and this kind of thing but essentially I know it's interesting I was in a in a cafe in Oxford and there were some paintings on the wall that have been donated by an art class that ran in a village outside Oxford and they're perfectly nice, you know, paintings of vases of um, full of flowers or oranges and, you know, someone's dog and, and this kind of thing. And, you know, and they're, and they're fine pieces and they're, and they're up in this cafe. And it really made me think, you know, what is the difference between these and the stuff in the, in the Ashmolean, say? Mm-hmm. Because if someone was to, take one of those, was to take one of those paintings from the wall on this cafe that was done by, you know, Edith aged 73 you know yeah. and, and put it in the Ashmolean and said it was by someone really famous or put it in that context of this is significant enough to be in a museum I'd probably really really like it but just on the wall of this cafe I was like meh you know mm-hmm. context is is probably more important than ever I guess because yeah. then because I guess that's where the line is that's where the difference comes between Oh, anyone could do that, especially in modern art, like people being like, I could do that. But it's all about the context in the art world where it is there and then, mm. you know, it means those blocks of colour on the white sheet make a difference. Yeah, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. And it was interesting as well, like during my degree, there was lots of stuff that you you learn about in real depth. And you, and you hear all of these theories about it and about the idea of, you know, so Mondrian is a brilliant example of this. So Mondrian um white canvases yeah and 
red and yellow, this kind of thing. You were two hours outing when I was saying yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my face. Yeah. Um, Some tweet at Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> at me next time. Um, <laughs> but you, so we did this big, big research about Mondrian and about the idea that there is there's this concept in modern art about the idea of a grid being really important. There's concept about colour and sort of anti-colour. So the black represents form and anti-form and, and going really into theoretical depth about it. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I'd prefer it if I didn't know that. You know, yeah. I prefer it. And a lot of art history is, which I think is is a lot of people's view, especially people who haven't studied it, a lot of it is sort of made up in it and sort of justifying having opinions about stuff. And that's one of the things I think is really important is to have opinions about stuff just because, you know, because mm -hmm. I think if you have to write an essay to explain why you like something, but essentially why you like it is because it makes you feel good. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. That's something I've always found so intimidating. Like if I ever went to an exhibition with a friend who I knew was very kind of art literate, and even in uni, I had friends who did fine art and I'd go and see like the degree shows. And there was some stuff I just didn't get. But I found myself like quite intimidated by the space of being around people who knew more about art than me. And so I would be having to find reasons why I liked something or didn't in my own head. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, the, 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 the meaning of this is so deep and I don't understand it like silly me. But my friend Julia she would just be like, I like the fact they've put blue there. I like the fact that they've put green next to red or whatever. And I'd just be like, oh, you can just approach it that way. But I guess I've always been a bit scared to because I'm aware I'm, I like don't belong sometimes. But I guess I do. Everyone can belong in a gallery. It, hopefully. Yeah, it's, you know, the traditional gallery space is a frightening place to enter without feeling like you've got all of this back up it, it feels like going to a book club when you haven't read the book yeah <laughs> like there's this idea that it is such a kind of formal and sort of sacred place the art yeah. gallery that you're not really sure what the rules are and if you're going to accidentally break them uh, and and this kind of thing um there aren't really any rules you know I don't think most artists don't really mind most artists are just like just please anyone's looking at any of the stuff they make <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but yeah, I think some sometimes you can ruin what you like by thinking about it too much. Yeah. If your hobby is painting and then you go and study painting, sometimes that can completely make you want to set your paintbrushes on fire and never think about it again. Or, you know, if music's your hobby and then you and then you become a musician, it can sort of slightly kill it for you. So I think it's the whole don't make your work and hobbies thing. Which, mm. I mean, I'm terrible. I've literally done the opposite of that. But it's true. <laughs> like, you still need to have things that are, you don't want to study it to death. My soul feels refreshed having seen this Farmer's Boy painting because it is just not something I would ever have paid any attention to. Well, I thought, well, when I sent it to you, I was like, oh, I feel quite like... I was like... Because also, when I asked my mum about it, it came up and it looked different to how I remembered. Like, not much, but just a bit. Like, the version in my head was a bit fresher and like he looked a little bit different and I got it up and I was like oh is that is that it like is that the thing that I had such a connection to and I felt almost like a, a bit embarrassed like sending it because I was like oh gosh like you know I saw I thought about the one Josie had sent in a previous episode and I was like oh that one was really cool and I feel like this is just but it's nice that you liked it a bit <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I'm really enjoying about doing these is taking getting to take a bit of time looking at stuff with no pressure to know anything for, for either for either party and just being able to have a discussion about it which I said essentially is what art is meant to do it's it's a communicative thing and you know it's sort of the artist communicating with the viewer through the artwork the artwork communicating with the viewer regardless of what the artist thought you know there's loads of different sort of strings coming off it um I think it's really really great actually it's made me quite happy. Oh. It's quite nice as well for paintings like this, which aren't necessarily done by someone hugely famous, and they're not, um, you know, in, in an enormous museum either, and they have, and they're not given much of their own space. They're not given a very like a, a very solo platform. It can be really nice to take these things out of context sometimes, 
and properly have a look at this as its own thing, regardless of what else is in the room, kind of taking it one thing at a time. Just to finish up, can you let us know where we can follow and hear from you? Yeah, so uh, my channel's called Soph's Notes. It's on YouTube, so you can subscribe to that. Or you can find my Instagram, it's at Soph's underscore notes. Uh, or my Twitter's at Soph's Notes. They're all very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Just search Soph's sure. Notes and I'll be there. <laughs> I'll make sure that's all written written in a in, in an appropriate box. <laughs> Amazing. I love boxes. <laughs> so that was my chat with Sophie. You can follow Sophie in the ways written below and you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching and please do share this video about. And goodbye.